Good morning. I'm Yanni the Greek coming to you live straight from Las Vegas. It's Tuesday, August 6th. We got to dive right in. I got about a 10 a.m. call time over at UFC headquarters doing uh, some taping with DraftKings. They're putting together some underdog MMA, I don't know, movie or something like that and uh, asked me to be a part of it. And then we have the gambler's perspective will not be in action tomorrow. We are taking a pass this week. But we are taping two UFC on the lines at Apex on Thursday. One will be out live at 6 p.m. Eastern, only on UFC Fight Pass. Coming off back-to-back -back winning shows there as well. Just crushing MMA all over the board. Uh, you can watch that one live and you'll see uh, my yearly results. Just unbelievable, the return on investment. Sometimes you just get a little bit lucky and uh, look a lot better than you are. Sometimes you look a lot worse than you are as well. You guys know how that goes. A lot of randomness the short term. Now, with that out of the way, I think we did sweep the Major League Baseball bets last night with Boston and over, but we did lose an Olympic bet on Greece plus eight in men's basketball. I think we were able to squeeze out a little bit of profit, so I will take it. Now, not much betting action going on today. In fact, I did fire some college football did fire some preseason NFL, uh, did fire some tennis that's already started. And so far, no Major League Baseball steam from the groups that I moved for. Now, one of the traders I share with did send me over under in Mets, Colorado. But, but, got to remember, that one opened at 10 and a half, went to 11, went to 11 and a half. So no surprise, they're going under 11 and a half. The question is, did someone else from that same group bet the over 10 and a half and then this mover who's higher up on the food chain did he come over the top in 2x 3x 4x the under at a much better number especially with 11 being a key number so i have a few hours to try to figure that puzzle out a couple pieces you got to look to to confirm it nothing very difficult nothing very advanced nothing even nuanced or proprietary in fact um just takes a little bit of experience moving the stuff and you could always determine what they're really doing just look at the line movement fortunately line services look at wager talk odds live screen it breaks it down minute by minute so uh it's hard for them to pull anything in these days and and not have anyone have access to watching the line movement picking it off easily um so with that said let's go look at some of the major league baseball action that i did have leans on i can give you that at least let's do that really quickly uh where were we? Where were we? Let's go. Where's Miami? Miami. We have a lean on Miami. Miami as home dogs. Miami as home dogs. Also, write these down. Miami. It's all done. So I know. So I know these leans for later. Miami. We got the. Under San Fran Wash. We like Atlanta. Atlanta. And under eight and a half. That's what we're looking at there. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Oh, we gave you that one, Mets, Colorado. Let's go. Let's go. We're going under eight and a half. Philly, LA Dodgers. Remember, these are my leans. This is the stuff that I do last night with all my handicapping that I do at Major League Baseball so that I have my opinion already formed before the betting syndicates come in, before the overnight line moves happen. I need to already have my liens. So if something moves against me, I get to dig deep. Did I miss something? Am I overlooking something? Is it key or is it the narrative? Does it have to do with last night's result? Does it have to do with the series? So that's why I am always have my opinion well before I look at betting lines, well before any of the betting syndicates move. I always try to get those in. Now so let's move on to the American League. What do I got there for my liens? Yeah. 
spread. We were looking at Toronto and under eight and a half. We were looking at Texas as home dogs. We were looking at under seven and a half, Detroit, Seattle. We'll pass on that one. Then we want to look at inner league. We're looking at Arizona. Under eight. Tampa Bay, St. Louis. I think it's seven and a half mostly across the screen right now. I missed the overnight. Ain't going to mess with it. That's about it. So there are the leans. I'll give them to you real quickly again. Miami, under San Fran, Washington, Atlanta, and under. Under Philly and the Dodgers, American League. Toronto and under eight and a half. Texas, under seven and a half. Detroit, Seattle, interleague. Arizona, money line, under Tampa Bay, St. Louis. Those are the leans. As the groups fire, if they land on any of these, I know to piggyback more of my money along with what I get from the account already. I piggyback some more and I release as a premium play. If they come in opposite, I move for them because that's my job and I don't release for subscribers and I don't piggyback. That's what I do. If I have no opinion, I bet for them. And once again, the same thing. I either don't piggyback and not release to subscribers. So you have a lot of strong leans there. You get to decide whether you want to follow fade or just ignore. Let me see if I give you any football, any football, any football. All right. Oh, with the Eagles. We got the Eagles. We got on the Eagles at plus two, plus one, money line, and minus one. So the Eagles got to be some players being held back or some injuries or some worried about what quarterbacks are starting. A little game plan information must have squeaked out. That's what usually happens in the preseason. Uh, wise guys get their hands on it before the betting syndic before the odds makers do. They're always able to get out ahead. That's what usually happens. Uh, so I think that's what we got with the Eagles. We also got a total under Detroit and the New York Giants. But let's get to some of these questions really quick. In the comments, make sure to go down, smash that like button, show the support, share it, put it out there, let them know this is where the action is. This is where the gold lies. All right. Boxing God, my man. I, Ace, I suffered two really bad beats on Friday. I've been there, done that, my friend. In an attempt to make up my losses, oh, I know how this one's going. I made two bets, one on boxing, one on tennis, for 10% of my bankroll. You just jumped up your risk of ruin really high. Here's the here. I'm, I know I, I want to keep going on your question, comment, or story, but here's what I want to add really quickly right there. Once you make the mistake of overbetting your edge and overbetting your bankroll, you put yourself in a position where you're going to continue betting from a position of weakness. And here's why. What are you going to do? Go backwards now? You just put 10% of your bankroll on two bets. If those two lose, what do you do? Now you're going to go back to 1% to a half a percent? How are you going to make up that 10% you lost? Going to take two years to do it? No. You're emotionally, you're going to be like, I got to get that back. And that's when you're going to overbet and keep overbetting and your risk of ruin is actually going to manifest into the bookie having your bankroll. That's what happens most times. Then what happens if you win? Now what? Are you really going to go back to doing the right things forever? Really? You didn't do it that night. So what's going to happen? You're probably going to overbet your bankroll, and it's not going to work out for you the next time. I tell this out of love, Boxing God, because I've been there, brother. I've been there over and over and over and over again. So many times that I'm, I, I, I was mad at myself. Like, how can you let this happen to you over and over and over again and expect a different result? Like the definition of insanity, according to Einstein, if we continue to do the same things over and over again and expect something different to happen, we know what's going to happen. We know how this story ends. Let's continue with my man. He said he went to dinner and he remembered what I said. 
about overbetting our bankroll. And he was able to cancel those bets. So he canceled the 10% without penalty. Good for you. Didn't even pay VIG, my man. And he bet 0.75 of a percent. So less than 1% of his bankroll on each of those. On Anderson and Alcaraz. Both ended up losing. He said, keep preaching because you're listening. Thank God. Thank you, bro. God bless you. Honestly, you did. That's the, that's the demon that's on every one of our shoulders every single day for everything we do. Forget just sports betting. It's for everything, whether we're saving money or not saving money, whether we're going to cheat on our spouse or not cheat on our spouse, whether we're going to lie or not lie today. Every single day, we have the opportunity to do what we know is right, to do what we know is wrong. I'm not going to eat that. I am going to eat that. I'm not going to work out. I am going to work out. I'm going to spend money. I'm not going to spend money. I am going to gamble. I'm going to invest. There's just so many options we have every single day. And more times than not, every single one of us watching this is intelligent enough to know right from wrong, good from bad. We do. We do. And even the most novice sports better, if they've been around for even a month or two, understands if they're chasing, understands if they're gambling, because you know how you start to feel. You know the difference between placing a bet and gambling. We all know that feeling. We've all been there. So boxing God, you did the right thing. But more importantly, you got tempted, made the mistake, and rather than letting the dice roll and seeing how it's going to turn out, you decided to stop it right there, right there, to not allow the outcome be determined by good luck or bad luck, not leaving it up to gambling, not leaving it up to randomness, but actually taking control of your betting, taking control of your money and, and actually wagering from a position of strength. Whether you went 0-2 or 2-0, and you bet from a position of strength. You didn't overbet. You didn't even pay VIG to get off a bad bet. You won. You came out ahead. That money you would have lost, bro, you need to factor that into your head as a win, even though you went 0-2. Think of the, the, how much it would have dented your bankroll had you lost that. And more importantly, what position would you be in after losing those bets? You'd be on your way to losing your bankroll. I hate to put it to you that way, brother, because I, I say it out of love, but it's tough love in this room because we, we, I, I want good for you. I don't want to stroke you and tell you what you want to hear. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I want to tell you how you can improve because this is one thing I do understand. There's a lot of things. I, no one should take my opinion on some shit. I'm not an expert in most things. I'm an expert in a very, very few things. One of them happened to be sports betting. And that's why I'm telling you, you did the right thing, Boxing God, by realizing and correcting instead of repeating. And that's the, that's the key, that you catch yourself. We're always going to be tempted, bro. You're going to be tempted when you're running hot too, not just running cold. You're going to be tempted all the time to do the wrong thing. That's what the casinos bank on. That's what the sports books depend on, on us doing the, making the mistakes. They know we're going to make them. They know we're going to make them. Even having that 11 to 10 edge, they still depend on us making mistakes so that they're guaranteed that profit. That's why they win every month, every single month. Like if you, I don't think, no lie. I think if we went back over the last 10 years, okay, that's 120 months. I don't think Las Vegas sports books or casinos as a whole have lost more than two of those months. Maybe one, maybe 1% at the most, at the most. It's just people just lose, bro. That's, that's. 99.5% of people lose gambling. And, and the thing is, these are publicly traded companies. So this is readily available data. This isn't Ace just giving you an opinion because I've been around casinos and now oh, this is my, uh, this is what I think. No, no, this is what we know. This is what we know. So good for you. Good for you for realizing you are about to gamble and bet from a position of weakness where regardless of outcome, you were screwing yourself. And instead you said, hell no, hell no. No, 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 no. I'm going to bet it the right way. Win or lose, they're going to have to earn, earn any money I lose, just like I'm going to earn any money I win. I'm not just going to hand it to them just like they're not handing it to me. 
They're never just going to hand it to you, so please don't ever hand it to them. And that's exactly what you're doing once you start betting 5 and 10% of your bankroll on a play. You fall in a category. Listen to this very carefully. This is the most important thing I will ever say. If you overbet your edge, regardless of win percentage, you will go broke. Your win percentage is irrelevant if you overbet that edge. You become a mathematical certainty to go broke if you overbet. That will not happen if you underbet. Now, underbetting is also bad. It's probably the second worst thing you could do because you're not taking full advantage of your edge, but it's not going to break you. Overbetting will guarantee to break you. So the smaller you bet in relation to your bankroll, the lower your risk of ruin is, the great more you're betting from a position of strength than a position of weakness. It's on you what you want to do. Listen, if you ain't got the patience, this isn't you boxing guy. This is just talking about it. If you don't have the patience to play the long game, this game isn't for you. It's just not for you. And there's nothing wrong with that. Find a different game, one that you could beat. But if you're not prepared to play the long game as a sports better or investor, you're just, this is not for you. You're just not built for it. And there's nothing wrong with that. But find something you're built in for so you excel in it because it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen in this. You have to have that long-term thinking. You have to have that long-term thinking. Like I talked about the other day, when I invested in art, I knew, I knew that I'm going to invest in 30 plus paintings and I'll be lucky if after seven to 10 years, I've exited all of them. I know it'll take at least five years. I knew at least five years before I even Start recovering money. It happened within three, but I was prepared for five, for five years to not see a penny. And I'm going to put that six figures there and it's going to, I'm not even going to see it again. For over five years, I'm not going to see any kind of return on my investment. I was prepared for that. Now, if you got to know what you're getting into, that's the key. So I love it. Thank you. Not to go long boxing, God. Good for you, bro. Honestly, good for you. You're winning. You're winning. You're winning. That's it. And if you have access to winning information or you have the ability to beat the ed, the VIG in any sports betting market, you're a mathematical certainty to win money, brother. There's, you, you could do nothing else but bet sports. If, if you can do, consistently do that, that could be your life. Just waking up, betting into a sports betting market, and that's it. Your day's done. Go swim. Go enjoy your day with your family. Go golf. Watch TV. Do nothing. Study. Learn. Read. But you could actually, if you learn this business, you could get up like I do, 5 a.m., trade between 5 and 10 a.m., five hours, eh, between six and 10, four hours. Let's not lie. Do your heavy trading between those four hours. And then I check in one more time later in the afternoon. That's it. I'm done. And then at night before bed, like I said, I do the next day's work. It's a pretty good life, man. You got to work seven days and year round. You don't have to. You choose it, but it's pretty good if you do the right things. All right, smashing and sharing daily, my man. All right, my man, smashing and sharing. Neil says, not complaining, crying, or bitching. Absolutely amazing how fast groups seem to move these NFL lines. I released three premium NFL games, two sides in a total, and the suckers move two points or greater in a matter of minutes. Yeah, yeah. It's preseason. It's the first set of plays that came out. So that's going to happen. And you have to remember, the betting public, Neil, hasn't really gotten involved yet. So right now, it's us against them. It's wise guys versus the books. So they're going to adjust quickly, and they're going to adjust significantly as the preseason starts to you know, take hold and games start to play and people start to get interested in football and realize it's here, the public money will start reaching the window. As it reaches the window, it starts to offset that wise guy money. Now they don't have to move as quickly. Now they don't have to move as significantly. In fact, many times you'll even be able to, if you miss it early, come back a day, two days, three days later and get that same line because the public money will come back and move it if they haven't spoken yet. So don't worry about this first wave of, of week one or week zero preseason, even the week zero college football. You will get these numbers. If you have multiple outs, I promise you, I am high enough up on the food chain and I have 
now I have Jess who's going to be uploading all the plays. So as I'm getting them from the groups on this bot and I'm betting them, Jess is sending them to you. You'll get them fat as fast as pretty much I'm getting them from the group. And if you have multiple outs, you should get these numbers. I mean, you may have to shade a half point here, a half point there on occasion. Um, if it's like a, a one of the Wisconsin, Milwaukee, unlike if it's Florida, Texas A&M, more publicly backed matchups where our bets won't stick out as much, won't put the books at, at such high risk. Right now, we're, they're the only risk, and they know we win more than we lose, so they're going to move that line to reflect our action. And they're going to do it significantly to stop others from piggybacking it. That's all they're doing right now, Neil. Don't let it discourage you. If anything, that should make you happy. I'm proud that you didn't take a bad number. Why? We have all year. We're going to make so many bets. Why take a bad number? You will take plenty of great numbers and, and know you made amazing bets. And the result of those bets, when all the dust settles, should result in profit because you're placing good bets at good numbers. You're avoiding the bad bets. You're avoiding the bad numbers. You're going to do just fine. It's, it's, it really isn't harder than that. Once you have access to winning information and then it's getting it down, getting it down. That's why I'm, I have my job because these guys have trouble getting it down. You see, I have trouble getting it down. You'll have trouble getting it down. That's the goal. That's the problem. When you have a winning shop, when you have winning shit, huh? it's getting it down. But like I said, high enough up on the feed chain, I set them set up for football so that you guys are getting them as I'm betting them. And as long as you have multiple outs, you will be able to get down on college football and NFL without much problems at all, especially as the market gets infiltrated by more and more recreational players. People are still on vacation. Schools haven't even started. People are still in summer mode. That's about to change in another week or so. That will change, and you will see the betting market reflect that change as well. Great, great comment. Thanks for sharing that. My man says, my man Shane24, we need a live stream from the Hard Rock Blackjack table Friday, Saturday, Sunday it'll be too. <laughs> Listen to this. Thursday, Thursday, shooting two UFC on the lines. So I got a call time. I think noon, got to be at makeup, noon, noon, 1230. Shooting a live show at 3 p.m. Right after that, we're shooting a taped show that they're going to air on Monday for the UFC pay-per-view the following week. Then once I leave Apex in the evening, I get home, pack some stuff, shoot to the airport, take the red eye to Tampa and uh, check into the Hard Rock, go to Andrew's wedding, and uh, then have Saturday, Sunday, a uh, little vacation in Clearwater since we're there and gambled last time. Hard Rock hooked up, you know, comp room, comp food, comp, uh, you know, 300 bucks while you're there to spend at their stores, that kind of, not, you know, the stuff that they kind of entice you with. Um, actually, in my girl's name. Because you know, I didn't give my name. She gives her name. Um, so she just gets all the points now. And uh, we've been doing it that way. It's been working well. So, yeah, I, I will try to uh, put out some some type of video, some kind of live stream. Uh, see some blackjack action from Tampa Bay for sure. For sure. It's going to be a good time. If you're down in that area, make sure you stop in, say hello. If you're at Clearwater, we're going to spend two days at the beach. We're actually, like I said, making a little vacation of it. Didn't take a vacation this year. Every year around the All-Star break, I'm gone. I'm gone. Haven't been able to go to Greece since the COVID nonsense. Um, so I'm thinking next year I'm going to be able to do that because moved into a new house, had to get all this stuff, you know, a little cash poor at the time. Not going to go to Greece, to Europe. But next year. So I said, listen, we didn't take a vacation this year. It's not good. You got to reset. You need to reset. You need a break in the year. And uh, so the opportunity came, go to the wedding and do a little, uh, you know, be working. Obviously, I work every day, but I'll get to relax in the evening, do a little swimming in clear water. We'll see. We'll see. All right. All right. Is there any plus money strategize, strategies you advise on plus money going against the trend? The White Sox will eventually win a game. Obviously, we don't know when. Just double up, double up. Well, it, it's a great question. It really is because the truth is you, you literally, you can do that. Like if you have unlimited bankroll, then all I have to do is pick a team, any team every day, once a week, 
I'll start the week off and I pick a team. Let's say the Yankees. And I'll bet them for 100. If they lose, I bet them for 200. If they lose, I bet them for 300. If they lose, I I mean, I bet them for 400. Bet them for 800. Bet them for 1600. So I keep doubling up trying to win that $100. Eventually, the Yankees are going to win a game, right? It's no problem at all. So I just keep doubling up, keep doubling up, keep doubling up, keep doubling up until they win a game. They play 162 games in baseball. They will win, right? Makes perfect sense. Here's where the problem comes in. Limits, which is the same reason they have limits on blackjack tables, on roulette tables, on crap tables, on games, because otherwise a billionaire could just come in here and do that exact same thing. Start with $100 and just keep doubling up, doubling up, doubling up, doubling up until he wins a hand of blackjack. I believe winning, losing 10 straight hands of blackjack, the odds against are like 99.7% against. 10 or 11 straight hands. I think the 11th straight hand is 99.7% against you losing that 11th straight hand, which is why they have a limit at the blackjack table, maybe $25 to 2000 So if you're going 25 50 100 200 400 800, 1600, you're done. You can't bet 3,200 on that eighth bet. You got seven bets. That limit's gone now. Remember, it's 25 to 2,000. You got to make $3,200 bet on that one just to win 100. And you've lost all of these along the way. You start to sweat, starts to get dangerous because now you're, you're betting what? You're laying what? 20,000 to win that 100 bucks. You're in the hole. So you need a big, big pockets. And you need limits that allow that. That's the problem. And it's one of those great in theory, bad in practice type of, of, of things where it sounds great in theory. Just keep doubling up till you win. Eventually, you're going to win. But in practice, it's not as easy, which is why casinos put limits. So you can't just martingale them. And also, bank bank rolls make that very difficult to do. There just isn't any blind trend to go on or against. Trends, here's the thing. You can find the trend for anything. You put in enough factors, you'll find 100% trend for something. This team is 14-0 and 0 on Mondays when the starting pitcher's last name starts with an S and they go against a team from the National League East who happens to have a pitcher starting with a first name with the letter A. Like you add enough freaking trends in there, you will find something that's 14-0, and 8-0, and 10-0, and 100-0. Is what you have to ask about a trend? Is there a systematic reason why that's a fundamental reason why that should continue? Like, is there a fundamental reason this trend should continue? Them winning on Monday, is there a reason for that? Do they sleep longer on Sundays? Is like, is it like if there's not a fundamental reason why this team wins on Mondays, then no, this trend should not continue, let alone their last names or the other team's first name or the other team, what division they're from. Like, all those factors become meaningless, right? So that's where you got to worry about finding blindly back in or fading any type of trend coupled with markets are efficient and they correct themselves. And the sports betting market is one of the most efficient. And that means it will correct itself. So anytime there is a trend that has statistical significance, the market is designed to correct itself against that. That's why it's difficult betting trends. They sound good in theory. They also sound good in promoting, but we ain't making money betting them. All right. What will I be betting in Tampa? Here's the plan. Here's the plan. Blackjack for sure. Sports for sure. Um, last Super Bowl, I was there for the Super Bowl, man. I made a score. I made a nice score, actually. Decent score. I ended up, because I didn't take the comps, it wasn't as good score because the room was like 1,100. A night. So with fees, resort fees, all that was like 1300 a night for the room. And I think we stayed like five nights. So it ended up being like five grand because, you know, they give you a little fee, they had a little break, this or that. So it was like five dimes for the room. Um, and then, you know, not getting comp meals and all that stuff. That's what gets, that's what's expensive staying at the hotel. That's why RFB, full room, food and beverage is so key. And what's the deal I always hooked up when I used to work with card counting groups. Um, but because I can't use my name, I can't take the comps. Um, so we're doing it through her and, uh, hopefully that works out, but I'll be betting blackjack. I'll be betting sports and, uh, she'll be playing some slots for sure. She plays slots and we may give them some action on some table games to look square. It depends if we win or lose. I don't have much time and I do want to get in a little vacation. So I don't want to make it just a gambling, um, getaway, but I will be doing that for sure. All right. How do you sharps find inefficiencies in preseason NFL? It's 
that just guessing since we have no idea who's going to play. And now, well, the key is finding out who's going to play. And that's what these guys are doing. Um, I mean, they are combing any uh, source of information to try to pick up any nugget they can from uh, offensive line coach, defensive line coach, quarterback coach, wide receivers coach, any quote that may get them a nugget that's not factored into the betting line. And then when actual uh, confirmation is given, they try to get ahead of the move. That's what they're doing in preseason. So they're not just guessing. They're not guessing who's going to play. They're confirming before the market does who is going to play with probability, where how probable that is, and that's how they're sizing their bets. Um, it's not like the, the NFL, the first week of NFL, where right now anyone betting first week of NFL, they're simply betting that the line's going to be different come that Sunday. So they're trying to get out ahead of the move. It's hard to handicap the matchup because we don't know if there are going to be any injuries in the preseason between now and then. So there, that's why looking at week one is a little different than we can at, looking at preseason. Regular season, week one, they're simply trying to get out ahead of the market. Even if they're betting week two, week six, week 10 games right now, it's because they think when week 10 comes around, that line will not be available. It's simply getting out ahead of a expected line move. All right. All right. Our Martinez, do we have access to look up your football picks and futures? Yeah, I think, I don't know. I think they had a, uh, up at wager talk. I have, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Wow, I got like 17? Yeah, 17 football bets pending already. That's futures. We got college football futures. NFL futures, the season win totals, that is, and even uh, a playoff future and conference future. And then we just have a bunch of sides. I think we have one, two, three, four, five preseason bets for week one of preseason. And I think we got like three college football week one bets. So yeah, we're in action, baby. All right, dirty reg. This last but not least, Ace Man, if you're so cold in baseball, just simply stop betting it and focus on the other sports that you're going well. Every show you talk about how bad it's going, I personally never will make a memo B bet, just not my kind of action. You got to bet what makes you comfortable. I understand where you're coming from, Dirty Reg, um, but like I, I've just continued to say, I zoom out. And when I zoom out, I see nothing but profit in baseball. I see a small sample size of losses, but when I zoom out, I see that in a lot of places. Like last year, we finished number one in profit in Major League Baseball, but there was a period of time over two months where I got crushed. I could have just stopped then and said, ah, I'm going to give up on baseball and give up on these guys, but they turned it around. We ended up having one of the best baseball seasons compared to where we had started. And when I look over the last, what, eight years, nine years that I've documented, I think that, I think this may be the first one in like five plus years that's negative. So I'm not going to just, change what's worked for me long term in the short term. I'm not I'm never going to do that. Um and I'm glad I didn't because as I, I look, we have been turning it around since the break, at least in baseball. And um that's the key. The key is not to change what you're doing based on lack of statistical significance. Like if if it's different if we'd lost last year in baseball lost the year before in baseball, or only had two out of the last six years we won. But it's been the exact opposite. So when that's the case, I'm not going to allow short-term streak affect that. I just can't do it. And right now, if you look over baseball, the last seven days, I'm number one in profit. No one's made more money than I have in baseball over the last seven days. In fact, I've picked up 17 units, and I have a 15% ROI. So you just don't know. Now, this may continue because we had done so bad in the first half. Dude, these guys might continue. And like I say, 15% ROI is not sustainable long term, but we will progress towards the mean. And the mean in baseball has been so profitable that that's why I got so excited about the second half. And yeah, I'm not saying because we picked up 17 units in the last seven days, we're going to do that every seven days now until baseball is over. But I'm really excited that football's here just about. and. I'm upset that we lost, but I'm excited that we're going to progress towards the mean. And there's still enough time in baseball for that to happen. So I hope that makes sense that like, I just don't have a big enough sample size to even confirm that, okay, this is, 
these guys are just negative EV this year. So, uh, yeah, they've chipped away. I mean, they were down, what, 220-something units, and they're 185 now, so they picked up like 35 units since the break. Keep that up. It's going to be profitable by October. You don't know. Again, I'm not promising anything, but they've been nothing but turned it around. So, yeah, that's why I do it. That's why I do what I do. I don't time it. I'm not trying to time anything. I'm, I trust time in the market, how much time I'm in it. I know if I'm in it for five years bet baseball, I'll be profitable. One season, I don't know. Two seasons, still don't know. So hopefully, three seasons, more than enough statistical, more than enough sample size of bets, I should be profitable. Four or five, yeah. Or else I'm, I'm betting a losing market. I don't, I'm not plus EV in that market. But if you look at football, you look at baseball, you look at basketball, those sports where I look at a big sample size and I'm profitable, I'm not going to allow a losing season or half a season make get me off my game or make me change the way I'm doing it. Sure. Would I have loved to not have bet baseball this year and be up 200 units? Absolutely. But if I didn't bet baseball last year, we wouldn't have increased starting bankroll by 80% either. So you can't, you can't guess these things. You can't time them. It's almost like Monday morning quarterback would have, could have, should have. It's easy to say it now, but coming off last year, finishing number one in profit in baseball, you come in with optimism. And uh, still optimistic. So great, great comment. Totally understand where you're coming from. And if you don't feel comfortable betting baseball or football or whatever, don't do it. That's the goal. That's the key. Bet where you feel like you're betting from position of strength. Bet where you feel you have an edge. Went way too long. Oh, shit. I got to be at Apex in freaking 30 minutes. Love you guys. Have a great day. Enjoy the games. Back tomorrow.